Well, we've got a packed show for you this week on EMBN, which is pretty remarkable given the global circumstance at the minute. Uh, shortly, I'm going to be joined by Doddy, who's working from home as his wife is uh, many months pregnant. But the big news this week has to be the launch of the new Sirion bike from Forestal out in Andorra. Well, it's certainly all happening in Andorra this week, and all I can say is Tony Bow is an absolute genius. Now, he's just done a game of bike with Scott Dryder, Antoine Buffart. Uh, if you look on his Instagram, it gives you a link to his YouTube page on the Scott website. Uh, the skills going on there with Tony Bow are simply off the chart. Doddy, what have you seen out and about this week? Uh, yeah, thanks Jones. Uh, as you can see, I'm I'm stuck here for the time being. I'm working from home. Uh, yeah, as is my wife. So yeah, thanks for that. Um, what have I been up to? Kind of sorting out a bunch of my bikes, to be honest. Taking the opportunity really to make sure everything's creak free and a lot of my bikes are creaking quite a bit. In fact, you should be doing the same, Jones. Uh, but in the sense of news, to be honest, not that much. I have seen though that childhood hero of mine, Timmy Mallet, he is now riding an e-mountain bike. Dude, we have to get in touch with him and do something. Do you remember Mallet's Mallet? Come on, some of you viewers out there must remember Timmy Mallet. I'm pretty sure on his, um, whatever the Saturday program was that he used to do back in the day, I sent in a postcard when I was a kid and he actually read it out. So uh, yeah, I'd love to get in touch with Timmy Mallet and go for an e-bike ride with him. Of course, when the trails are open again and it's acceptable to do that. Um, speaking of which, um, I've actually seen some local police riding Trek Powerflies, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, I wonder if they chip them though. What do you guys reckon? Do you reckon because the police always go a little bit quicker than everyone else, don't they? Would that be acceptable if the police chipped their bikes? I wonder. Oh, and one more electric thing revolving on uh, wheels, although different wheels, is I've got my turntables going again. Uh, totally not related to e-bikes at all, but um, I'm going to make the most of this and get back into my DJing thing. I always used to be into that, so maybe there'll be some musical stuff coming from me soon. Back to you, Jones. Well, Doddy, you seem to be pretty cosied up back there at home. Uh, all the best wishes to the wife. Um, let me give you a bit of a rewind now back to last summer where EMBN took on the Tour of Mont Blanc, which went from Switzerland to Italy to France and back to uh, Switzerland again. It was a huge, huge race and uh, the tour organizers have actually just put out their video of that event and uh, just watching it and some great memories uh, of an incredible trip. But let's not mess around. Clearly the big news this week is the Sirion from Forest Isle Bikes, which is out in Andorra between France and Spain. Now, we knew it was coming, but uh, clearly what they've done in such a short space of time is actually pretty extraordinary. Uh, we saw Cedric Gracia with the prototype bike out in Sea Otter only last, well, 12 months ago. But here it is in the flesh and ready for sale. Now, what we do know about this company, they brought in a ton of expertise from the motor racing industry, from IT, and also from aerospace. Now, what about the bike then? Well, it's lightweight. It's got a carbon fiber monocoque mainframe to it. It's got a motor which has been developed uh, specially by Bafang, and also it's got that really nice touchscreen display, which is, well, let's face it, it's pretty amazing, really. Now, one of the key things that interests me about this bike, apart that is from the motor and the design, is actually the Alpha Box frame on it. Now, they've used a mix of high and intermediate modulus carbon fiber uh, to achieve flex where you need comfort and also stiffness to improve the handling. Now, Doddy, if these guys have got this right, they're truly onto something, right? Tough. Well, Forrester, where do you even begin? Where do you even begin to start with that? Uh, I've never known anything like it. Yeah, so they're hailing from Andorra. Uh, they're making everything themselves, making the frames themselves. They're even making the motor and the batteries, which I, I just can't get my head around that it's a brand new startup doing this stuff. Uh, obviously, fronted by Cedric Grassi, we know him well, and there's also some other industry heavy hitters behind the scenes. Uh, really interesting stuff. And that motor, though, wow, I mean, the specs on it look really good. But it's something in particular that stands out to me from the things I look for in an e-bike. It totally disconnects. So when you're over the power of the motor, you are just riding a regular mountain bike. That is a massive bonus for me. I can't stand pedaling over the top of an e-bike motor. Man, those things, they just blow me away. Um, but as a brand, wow, um, I would love to go out there and see those guys. It's super easy to go and see them. Of course, when travel gets unlocked again, I want to be on a flight out to see their factory set up. I'm fascinated by that stuff. <laughs> 
Doddy, uh, don't get too distracted by that motor. There's other things to talk about, such as the sizing. Now, this bike comes in a range of sizes, from small through to extra large. If you look at the sizing, it's pretty contemporary. And let's not forget that it's got 170 millimeters of travel. It's got a 64 degree head angle and a 344 millimeter bottom bracket, which means this is a real aggro bike. Uh, what about the motor and battery though? Well, first of all, let's have a look at the, the modes on the bike. Now there's four modes. We got um, Eco, Sport, Race, and Nitro. Now they call Nitro the wild card feature. Uh, but the detail of the Eon Drive, it's, it's 250 watts, 600 newton meters, and Forrest will say it's a zero friction system uh, when you disengage it. Yeah, granted, it's super impressive that that's what they're bringing into the table with the motor. But I think there's much more to Forestel Bikes. I think as a brand, I think it's quite advanced, even though the fact it's very young, it's in its infancy. I mean, I love the fact that they're using Star Constellations for names in reference to the spec on the different models of the bikes. I love the fact they're bringing in the colorways from the Aurora. It's all quite natural, goes with that Forestel name as well. It's really, really quite a cool brand. I mean. Just look at the bike again on screen. The thing just looks great. It looks like it sits really well. An interesting point they made is it's all about weight distribution on the bike. And I know it's something that you talk about quite a lot, Jones. Uh, the fact they say the rider will get the same out of a size small as they will out of a size extra large. You're not going to be fighting that weight, I think, is the point they're trying to get to. Uh, but just on a purely superficial basis, I love the look of that smart trigger. Uh, that's probably the, like, the sleekest looking unit I've seen yet. Um, I've got high hopes for the brand. I really want to see them in the flesh though. That prototype we saw Cedric Grassi with looked cool, but didn't hang around for long enough for me to see it properly. So um, maybe we'll have to take a trip out there when things settle down a bit. Yeah, uh, I, it seems that Forestel have made a huge impact in a very short space of time. Now, in a minute, we're going to be talking one of the legends of mountain biking, Cedric Gracia, who is actually part of that company out in Andorra. Out on the channel this week, the dam. Now this is going to be huge. Is it the steepest climb ever? Uh, I certainly think this one's gonna gain some traction. Uh, so don't forget to tune in to that video coming out on Sunday. So we've spoken already about the hardware behind Forest Isle Bikes. What about some of the people behind this brand? Well, a man who was a BMX racer at six years old, he was a world downhill champion uh, 25 years ago in 1995. He's raced at the highest level. He's won World Cup downhill races. He's won World Cup four cross races. He's competed at EWS events, and he's also won Red Bull Rampage back in 2003. He's arguably one of the biggest characters in mountain biking, Cedric Gracia, and I managed to catch up with him in his home in Andorra. It's been, uh, it's, been, it's been a hard work, man. You know, life been uh, pretty hectic before, you know, like the only thing I have to care is train, race and, you know, enjoy time in the bike park and go everywhere I want, travel. And, and uh, now it's been more like uh, testing office time and uh, make sure this baby is coming alive the right way. And, and well, it's... It wasn't easy because we went the all in, you know, like could have been a lot easier doing like what everyone's doing. And, and that was not plan E, A, A with the team, you know, like my two partners as well. Hey, let's, uh, let's talk about yourself now. Uh, happy birthday, by the way, uh, 42 years. Uh, now, now 25 of those years, you've been a professional mountain biker. That's right. Uh, I, uh, are you, does mountain biking still excite you? Yeah, that's why I'm here in the first place because I have a lot of interest in my life. Then I love car racing. I love, I love so many different sports and I'm lucky to do sometimes. But biking is definitely not only sport for me, it's an escape. It's, uh, it's an opportunity to see different stuff and meet different people. and. What's your role within uh, Forest Dahl then? Uh, you know, obviously test rider, blah, 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 and all that, and ambassador and marketing department. But what, what, how do you spend your day to day with Forest Dahl? Well, if you want to know that I'm a partner, yes, I am a partner. I'm involved in the story from day one, yes. And uh, 
it's um, part of my baby as well, as well with my um, uh, my partners. And um, yes, it's uh, it's every day. It's uh, talking with the team, make sure we have the good infos every time uh, we need to test something new. I go and test and we have as well some of the guys in-house testing. Yeah. Hey, listen, uh, obviously people are going to be really excited about this bike. Uh, when when are these bikes going to be available? Well, we can do the to buy. To buy. Yeah. <laughs> it's, pretty, okay. it's, it's pretty close now. <laughs> It's pretty close now. Yeah, it's pretty close now. And um, and I think it's around October 2020 is going to be shipping all worldwide for free. And also free tires as well, I saw in the, yeah. the, uh, for the press release. Yeah, for a year's supply of tires. Wow. Coming back to you. Now, obviously, there's the EEWS series this year. Uh, any, any plans for you to be riding some of those? I mean, obviously, with the current situation worldwide, might, that might not happen, but should it go ahead, are you likely to take part in that? Why not? I mean, I don't know. You know, racing, I've been racing all my life, you know, and I feel like uh, being on the bike and riding where I want, when I want, it's pretty good. And if I want to race something, it's easy. I just have to put on my bike and I can see the G-Force, I can see my speed, I can see everything. Yeah, oh, but right, you not? can see the G-Force. What was that? Oh, sorry, I don't understand. <laughs> Excuse me. You can see the... <laughs> the, the you, you're breaking up. You're breaking up. Let me tell you, when you're going to see that screen with everything within there, Whoa. you're not going to use your phone anymore. Cedric, have a great rest of the day. Great to speak to you. Thank you very much and be safe. Have a good one, boys. Lots of comments this week uh, regarding some of our shoots. Now, some of you are a little bit concerned that uh, we're taking on dangerous activities out and about. Well, can I reassure you that many of our shoots have actually been done uh, several weeks ago out in Spain. So none of these shoots are actually taking place at the moment. We're on full lockdown here on EMBN. Uh, but going to some of the comments on some of the features. Now, Todd Giovanni um, is still amazed at the comments regarding the prices of e-bikes. He thinks the real crime is in the price of classic standard acoustic bikes. Uh, well, hopefully uh, already on the channel this week, you'll have seen our feature on our e-bikes expensive. I think what it comes down to is the, is the amount of range that you've got um, from non e-bikes there's far more options i think compared to e-bikes at the minute but obviously that will change now jack acid meanwhile thinks that uh e-mountain bikes is still too fledgling in technology uh, at this stage and thinks well actually he says he doesn't just doesn't like the way the e-bikes look and uh wants to give it five years but surely jack if you look at some of the bikes from canyon from specialized from forest Isle, which we featured on today's show uh, they pretty much look like non e-bikes right uh, but guys let's know what you think about the visuals of e-mountain biking are they up to scratch do you think that they need another five years let's know in the comments down below Well, we've been inundated with some amazing images from you guys over the last two weeks. So we've decided for a new section on EMBN called Out and About, or should we call it Out and About, Nick? Out and About. Out and About. Now, please bear in mind that some of these photographs were sent in prior to uh, new regulations and rules uh, surrounding the coronavirus. So yeah, please be uh, aware of that. Uh, to start off with Ian and his mate Greg, who are out on their Canevos up near Lady Bow Reservoir, keeping themselves to themselves in isolation. Yep, that's a nice part of the country up there. Uh, meanwhile, down in France, Mike is out in his Mondraker Crafty R in Vaison La Romaine in France. Now, uh, at the time, Mike said with lockdown rules in France, sporting activities were allowed. Obviously, that might have changed now. Uh, but Mike owns a bar, he's had to close that, so he's out on his e-bike. Nice bit of uh, bit of track there. Now, Nigel is out on a high bike full seven, actually two of them down at Spurnhead. He and his wife decided to distance themselves from the population and achieved it by cycling, uh, like I said, to Spurnhead, and there was nobody there. 
A uh, little bit further north, Arte and his decathlon EST500 in West Lothian, Scotland. Having a lot of fun, uh, even though it's a hub drive motor hardtail, uh, he wants to say thanks uh, to the great decathlon Edinburgh bike staff. So, good shout out there, Arte. Now, Brandon's on his 2016 Bulls E-Stream FS Enduro in San Diego, California. Uh, he's just crushed a long technical climb. And finally, Kyle on his high bike S Duro Hard Sem 4 2017, Orin Reservoir, Rosshire, Scotland. Now, this really, really does look out there. Uh, he wouldn't be able to get to this kind of location without his e bike. So, there you go. Uh, that's what you guys have been doing in the past two weeks. Please continue to send your phot photographs in, uh, whether it was, you know, obviously pre the current uh, lockdown status worldwide. And um, yeah, we'll get you in out and about. Well, it's bike vault time. Now, clearly some of us have got a touch of cabin fever at the moment. So we're gonna change things up in the bike vault for this week and coming weeks by having a few more bikes on show. And I'm gonna start things rolling with Anthony on his Norco side VLT out in Pemberton, Western Australia. Uh, following this on with two bikes from the UK, Paul and his common cell Meta Power in Swinley Forest, and slightly further west, out in Mardi Reservoir, is Richard and his white E150 RS. Heading west, uh, Thomas has been out riding his specialized turbo leaving comp in Reading, Pennsylvania. A couple of shots, nice shots there uh, from Thomas at the Witch's Hat atop the Neversink Mountain in Reading. Nice. Uh, actually, they're all nice. Actually, they're probably all super nice shots this week. Uh, Kyle's on his YT decoy out in Roanoke, Virginia. And Bruce is new to e-mountain biking in a 2020 Specialized Turbo Lever Comp in Powell Boot, Oregon, uh, North America. Wow, I'd love to go riding out in Oregon on, a, on an e-bike. Uh, actually, Bruce decided to buy an e-mountain bike from watching the channel. Uh, wow, nice one, Bruce. That's great news. Uh, Back to uh, closer to home, David's got his 2020 high bike, All Mountain 5 Fly On in South Wales. And Ross, out in Halden Forest, Devon, has been riding his white E180 with Shimano Di2 gearing and Hope Duo brakes. Further west, somewhere a bit uh, sunnier, Mark's on his Norco Range VLT C1 in Laguna Beach. Buck is on his high bike 9 race. Uh, with a race-ready mullet setup and the Fontana SRC race series. Oh, crikey. Probably a few, uh, few months before we get back racing. Uh, and a little further north, John on his Specialized Levo SL Comp Large, custom build in Cottonwood, uh, Nevada, USA. And finally, Paul uh, on his common style Metapower SX Signature uh, out in the Chopwell Woods. That's up north, not far from Newcastle in the UK. There you go, uh, a lot more bikes in this week's Bike Vault. I think we're gonna have to give them all a super nice, as I mentioned. So um, yeah, let's keep, keep your photographs coming in. We're gonna probably change things up as we go through the forthcoming weeks. Uh, who knows what's gonna happen? Uh, just, to, just check your photographs in the link just down below. So, tough times, guys. Uh, please let us know what you are doing to keep yourself sane during these times. And uh, But in the meantime, let us know what you think of the new Sirion from Forestal. Let us know. Get involved in the comments down below.